Thank you so much for coming and for in your interest in, uh, in this event. Um, and thank you very much for, to the University of Copenhagen for hosting us and to Ida for making this happen. We are really happy that we can be here. So my name is Catherine Westendorf and I am currently the Interim uh, Executive Director of IFGIA, the International Workgroup for Indigenous Affairs. We are an international organization uh, working on the rights of indigenous people and we work to promote and strengthen indigenous people's rights in partnership with indigenous people's own organizations. IFGIA was founded in 1968 by a group of concerned anthropologists in response to the genocide of indigenous people's groups in the Amazon. Since then, IFGIA has worked with indigenous peoples acro across the world. We work in Africa and Asia and Latin America and also in Russia through projects and strategic partnerships, but also in the Arctic. So we work globally. We work with UN mechanisms such as the Human Rights Council, treaty bodies and the UNFCCC. And we are observers to the Arctic Council and the Green Climate Fund. Um, we have quite a lot of publications uh, that we produce and uh, a number of them are in the back of this room. So you're very welcome to have a look at them after our event. And also we are very uh, happy if you sign up to our newsletter or uh, if you want to become a member, you're very welcome to do so. Climate change, indigenous people's rights and renewable energy. This is uh, the, the theme of our um, meeting today. The approximately 370, 370 million indigenous peoples worldwide account for about 5% of the global population, but 15% of the world's poor. Despite having least contributed to climate change, indigenous peoples are among the first to, to face the direct consequences. They often live in particularly sensitive ecosystems such as the Arctic and tropical forests and arid and semi-arid areas and are heavily reliant on natural resources on their lands and territories. 80% of the world's biodiversity is found on indigenous people's land and territories, 80%. Climate action is crucial today to ensure that temperature rise is kept within the 1.5 degree limit. This is recognized by indigenous peoples and during the Paris Agreement negotiations Actually, indigenous peoples advocated for a limit of one degree. However, climate actions have to respect fundamental human rights, including indigenous peoples' collective rights to their land and territories. <coughs> it is explicitly mentioned in the Paris Agreement, in the preamble of the Paris Agreement, that parties should, when taking action to address climate change, respect promote and consider the rights of indigenous peoples. It is also recognized in the Paris Agreement and by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, that indigenous peoples contribute to the conservation of ecosystems with their indigenous knowledge system, innovations and practices which have been passed down over many generations. Land and territorial rights are at the core of indigenous peoples' struggles and challenges globally. We see that in relation to extractive industries, but also when countries take actions to address climate change. Climate actions such as windmill parks, geothermal par uh, plants, and the more controversial large hydroelectric dams are often implemented on indigenous people's lands and territories without the respect for the rights of indigenous peoples and lack with lack of meaningful consultation and consent by indigenous peoples. These projects have resulted in conflicts, displacements, destruction of livelihoods, and have violated indigenous peoples' rights and undermined their self-determined development. We have within the last 10 years witnessed several examples of renewable energy projects that have significantly negatively impacted indigenous peoples and the environment, including violations of indigenous people's rights to free prior and informed consent, EFPIC. Examples come from all the world, from the Sami territories, from the Machupuches in territories in Chile, and we see it with windmill parks in Kenya and in Mexico. We will hear a bit more about examples in the later panel discussions and presentations.
At the same time, the international legal framework, such as the Paris Agreement and policies within, that, within international mechanisms, such as the Indigenous Peoples Policy of the Green Climate Fund, adopted in 2018, so a quite recent policy, are positive steps towards the recognition of Indigenous peoples' rights. Now we have to ensure that those instruments are being implemented on the ground where they actually count. Indigenous peoples are not against renewable energy. However, while Indigenous peoples' territories are hosting numerous clean and renewable energy projects, millions of Indigenous peoples remain without access to energy. As a response to this situation and the call of the SDGs agenda of leaving no one behind, the Indigenous Peoples Major Group for Sustainable Development, IPMG, which is the Indigenous Peoples Group that is following the Sustainable Development Goals uh, discussions, has established the right energy partnership with Indigenous Peoples. It is an Indigenous-led, multi-stakeholder platform that supports Indigenous Peoples' self-determined development. The goal of the Right Energy Partnership is to ensure that renewable energy projects are fully aligned with the respect and protection of human rights and to provide at least 50 million indigenous peoples access to renewable energy by 2030 that is developed and managed in ways that are consistent with their self-determined development aspirations. Indigenous-led renewable energy projects, such as my, micro-hydro micro -hydro or community-based energy systems, can offer better alternatives to the mega-projects that come with severe social and environmental impacts. Furthermore, the negative impacts of sustainable energy development can be avoided by ensuring that energy projects adhere to existing international human rights and norms relating to Indigenous peoples. It is therefore essential and timely to discuss how renewable energy projects can ensure and integrate a human rights-based approach and how indigenous peoples can contribute to ensuring that climate actions become truly sustainable long-term solutions to address the climate crisis the world currently faces.